Let's face it, long video reviews for a device like the Nokia G20 are extremely boring. So this is Abdullah giving you the world's shortest complete review. The hardware build quality is excellent. It's all matte plastic finish that feels very solid in the hand with practical design choices and it looks good too. Especially in this glacier silver color. This is the first phone in a long time that I confidently use without a case. The display is just okay. It's a 6.5 inch IPS LCD display with an HD plus resolution. It works well enough for watching content as well as being readable outdoors. The G20 also offers ample of available space with its up to 128 gig gigabytes of built-in storage, as well as support for a memory card, and it also works with two SIM cards. The haptic engine slash vibration motor is also decent. The single bottom firing speaker on the other hand is just about average. The side mounted fingerprint scanner is fast and reliable. And I really like that they integrated it into the power button. Call quality on the G20 is pretty good. Reliable signal reception, loud and clear on the phone calls, and the loudspeaker is decent. When it comes to sensors, the G20 has most of the sensors you will need, but it doesn't have a magnetometer, so you won't be able to utilize any compass applications. As for the cameras, the 48 megapixel main camera on the G20 is very good for its class. It's also acceptable in low light thanks to night mode. The other three cameras, 5 megapixel ultra wide camera, 2 megapixel macro camera, are just there for variety, but their quality is quite mediocre. Portrait images are decent with good subject separation, and the selfies are quite decent too. Video quality, on the other hand, is just so so. It's limited to 1080p, and there is no software stabilization, so the end results are most likely going to be shaky. The audio recorded, though, is quite good because it utilizes Ozo Audio, which uses two mics to cancel any background noise and wind and amplify voices. When it comes to performance, the MediaTek Helio G35 is quite weak. The G20 is not very fast and it's also not very smooth. But when you have things up and running in the background, usability becomes a lot more acceptable. This phone is definitely not suitable for hardcore users and definitely not for gamers on a budget. Battery life on the other hand is excellent. It has a 5,050 milliamp big battery capacity that will be able to last you up to three days with minimal usage and up to two days with hardcore usage. So you'll get between 10 and 12 hours of screen on time with excellent standby times. The G20 is running on Android 11 as a part of the Android One program. The OS is lightweight, mostly bloat free and very minimal. It will also give you two years of software updates and three years of security updates, which is nice. In conclusion, avoid the G20 if you're a power user or a gamer on a budget. Go for this if you don't spend too much time on your phone, want a phone that does the basics well, has a decent camera, has good software support, and excellent battery life and build quality. That's all, thank you very much for watching. You can also check out my unboxing video of the G20 and my other video comparing the G20 against the 504. So, what do you guys think about this short video format? Let me know in the comments down below. As always, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you're enjoying my content, and I shall see you in the next one.